What up everybody, welcome to the channel. I am your host Mike Fury and I make informative videos just like this one. So please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And welcome to the beginner's guide for Greedfall. And this is probably not the video you guys were expecting, but this is what happens when you fall in love with a, with a game and you wanna kind of give it the full blown treatment of what it deserves, right? You wanna do it right. So we're doing a full blown guide. We're doing tips we're doing things that the game doesn't tell you and it's all tailored around the gold edition of the game which is the edition that i played it has all the updates it is the base game that you will be playing now today in 2020 and it is a full-blown up-to-date guide on everything possible i'll also be doing a legendary guide and they'll finish off with my wish list for greedfall 2 dying world and my greedfall complete review this is going to be an honorable mention this game is wicked easy just telling you that that right now if you want to get your challenge worth of it i advise you pick hard or extreme in other words normal is a complete walk in the park granted i did die but it was more out of negligence instead of difficulty or challenge more just you know like me just being lazy and not applying like antidote while i'm poisoned or i legit 50 hours worth of gameplay never applied antidote once i just let the poison go ahead and i would just counter it with a medical potion but you could always like play the right way <laughs> as well but definitely the game is a walk in the park i would advise going hard or extreme for you to have that actual challenge aspect to it but even at those levels it's not it's never going to be dark souls first things first character customization whichever you pick man woman preset non-preset black white whatever right whatever you decide to do get ready to marry it because the game has no barber no tattooist no, no anything now i got hiccups i don't even know why let me go get a swig of water that's probably not gonna help because that's just a myth <laughs> point is whatever you decide to do you're gonna marry so hairstyle facial beard whatever the case may be hair facial hair get these nice mutton chops going for you nah You'll never be able to change them. So whichever thing you decide to pick, yeah. Make sure to go ahead and marry it because you'll never be able to get it, to swap it out or do anything to it. So next up, we have your starting class. I will have a dedicated video explaining skills and everything. But as far as starting class is concerned, it's from six different starting skills. It's going to pick three of them for you. So warrior starts off with one-handed heavy one-handed blades and firearms technical setting el elemental traps firearms and then one-handed blades and then magical will be one-handed heavy weapons stasis and divine ring magic if you like magic it is long range very cool stasis is a very useful ability especially when you level level it up but it allows you to basically stop them it's a stasis you stop them right in their tracks and allows you to position yourself in another you know way or from behind if you want to do something crazy which is a funny <laughs> comment in itself but hey i said it you can handle that or get mad at it whatever you want to do point is warrior all of this very self-explanatory will give you your recommended attributes which we're going to go into right now but depending on how you want to play these are going to be your starting skills you don't get to decide them it'll legit invest two points into each and every one of those starting skills because that's how much is required to add to them now you don't have to follow these you can legit become a hybrid like i was at the end i was able to hold a gun hold one gun uh magic in one hand and then also have a two-handed weapon in the other you could do that so just think of this more of a foundation if you will after you pick your class now we're going to go with the attributes now i'm going to go through each and every single one i'm going to give you guys more or less an explanation of everything even though you could obviously read strength stat is going to be good for blunt weapons so your clubs your hammers things like that they're going to be your bread and butter they also increase the amount of power that you get for each and every single melee weapon or melee attack agility adds fury and also adds damage inflicted by melee combat which also is all encompassing so if you want to high damage output these two work in tandem now in general the game does a good job of putting them side by side the ones that kind of work well with each other so strength and endurance agility and accuracy and mental power level and willpower but in reality they're very they're they're well synchronized so you don't need to follow that if you do strength and agility and get them both maxed out your amount the amount of damage you will be doing with melee combat is ridiculous 
but they do synchronize well. Agility and uh, strength. Now, agility also benefits towards people like using swords. They also very are literally have 60% of the legendaries are under agility. So if you want to use most of the legendary weapons available throughout the game, agility is going to be the way to go. Strength also has a couple of them, has the second most, because I found I'm mistaken, there's around maybe three to five legendaries under strength. Yeah, make sure to have your strength up so you can use those as well. But in my personal opinion, the best legendaries are under the agility uh, attribute. Mental power, strictly for mages, it's going to be your damage output, it's going to be your fury generation. It is cool for mages. Other than that, if you're not going to be a mage, if you're not going to touch the magic, stay completely away from it. But if you are going to be a mage, this is where it's at. Endurance is fully like just heavy relying upon your armor sets. So if you want to wear the better armors of the game, guess what? Endurance is the way to go. Now, at the same time, the uh, best armor in the game, in my personal opinion, doesn't have a requirement. It, it just doesn't. So you don't really need it for the best one. But in the meantime, while you're in those 10 to 20 hours, you might have want to have one point in endurance. Now, keep in mind, also, you will get these things called memory crystals and you'll be able to respect all of this. So just because this is your build early on doesn't mean that you have to keep this right. Accuracy, it's very directed towards the rogue of the game. Firearms and alchemic preparations. Alchemic preparations is just another fancy way of saying traps. So firearms and traps, this is the way to go. Accuracy will buff the armor damage and the amount of damage you do with both of those abilities or those uh, equipments. And then finally, willpower. This will help you use amulets and necklaces. And what they do is actually not only add plus magic points, which is your mana pool, and also effect durations, but also it allows you to, when you use the different necklaces they it's basically mps so it's uh, mana points per second so it gen regenerates your mana points or it might regenerate your health either depends on which necklace you're using right so that is more or less your attributes willpower and mental willpower there there are a couple legendaries in willpower and there's a one legendary in mental power so like i said there's only one legendary for your if you're a mage. So if you really wanted legendaries, I advise you to, to invest into agility. But point is, you have a couple. There's like around maybe three different legendary necklaces and maybe one legendary ring that will allow you to use mental power and or have it as a requirement, mental power and willpower. But yeah, those are your attributes. And finally, and again, this will be another video. These are I'm trying to go to, through these as fast as possible to give you guys as much information as possible and make it a complete guide. These are your talents. Now, to the for the start of the game, hear me clearly. For the start of the game, lock picking is the must. Is a must. You need lock picking, regardless of what you want to do. Lock picking is the go to because you'll need it. Because there's a, a once you leave the prologue, there's no way of coming back. So all those chests with all those goodies in it aren't gonna. You're never gonna be able to see them again, and they'll probably be beneficial throughout your first maybe five hours at least i believe that the chest will will be other than that other than lock picking being your main because it's the best skill in the game in my personal opinion you're going to want charisma and you're going to want intuition intuition will allow you to get dialogue options and allow you to gather more loot and while you're gathering plants as well but mostly the loot <laughs> Charisma will allow you to have some dialogue options. I'll give you guys, again, I'm going to make a full-blown video explaining how I would rank these. You're going to want at least one point in all of these, if I'm being honest, at least one point in all of these because it will allow you to like save some time going to other things. But I think Craftsman is the worst skill in the game. You can get away with not having a Craftsman skill. Just, just saying. Vigor is very helpful. It allow you to traverse through like little like ledges and like jump and things of that nature, which is... The tra for, for a traversal aspect, yes, you're going to want vigor. And then science. Also, keep in mind, whichever skills you decide to focus on, there are little sockets that you could put into space, into your armors. And those three that you could possibly do that, like you'll have a cape. Make sure to buy the cape. It'll add one to your charisma automatically. You'll buy the first thing you should be buying is a cape. Secondly, Get it's either gonna allow you to do a, in one of those sockets. You're gonna allow to up it by one vigor, one lock picking, or one science. Hear me clearly. So whatever you do, you'll have two points 
in one of these in lock picking, and then you'll allow the armor that you have, and you could swap out armors, which is a, a, a tip. By the way, I will have the tips video out uh, shortly. You're going to want the armor sets to then carry on the last point, right? Also, keep in mind, your companions also give you bonuses too. So you might not even need to have an armor set because your companion bonus also, like for example, Siora, she will have, she will give you a point in vigor. So therefore, now you could just invest one point in vigor, one point in the armor, oh, in the armor socket, and then another point for your relationship because you always carry her around. She is one of the better companions. But yeah, anyways, that is more or less talents. I'll be ranking them in a video, but lock picking for the prologue is a must. So when it comes to dialogue, right? Dialogue is very... If you've played a lot of Choice of Consequence games, this is going to be right up your alley. This is very, it's very simple. You're obviously going to have your default things to go to, right? Oh, I'm going to attack you or I'll do something else. But as the legate of the congregation, you are allowed to bribe people and pay for people. This is going to be an option that comes out often, 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 often. So you'll definitely use the amount of coin that comes through your pockets as something of, of a, you know, Kind of like a uh, de-escalator, right? Like you could call it that. You could also use your charisma. So if you have a high charisma, this should be 50, 75, or 100. If you don't have charisma at all, then it'll never pop up and it'll just be a zero, right? So definitely 50% chance. The cool part is that whenever you see anything, chances like that, save before any type of encounter like this or load up the previous save. And then you could just keep on trying until eventually it works. That's what a lot of people do. So you could do that. And also intuition is one that pops up a lot. All the, uh, some of the other talents that I mentioned earlier do pop up, but not as often. But intuition pops up enough for you to warrant to have that at a high level. And on top of that, it comes with other benefits. And then also charisma is definitely the go-to best one you could possibly have. Especially when you don't want, when you want to get the good ending, charisma is going to be your go-to. It's going to be the best thing you could possibly have. You could also bribe people sometimes, but it's not as effective. And it usually ends up having negative repercussions when you use the money instead. But charisma... For sure is definitely going to give you options in terms of dialogue companions companions are one of five right you could and forces you the game literally forces you to have two in your party at all times but in all actuality they're all pretty good they're all pretty like the i've seen worse companions than this but this is a crop of great individuals all with different backgrounds different stories different factions each one of them comes from a different faction and for the most part, I'm going to tell you guys the best ones, in my personal opinion. They all are very useful, and they're all tailored to a specific play style. So, for example, if you desire to be this heavy knight berserker, you might not want Kurt on your party because he's that type of guy. He's the, he's the big beefy that's going to aggro people. It's going to have, um, he's going to hit hard, but even be able to tank a lot of things. Like, that's him. That's Kurt. So, let me go ahead and look at him real quick. I actually, doesn't matter. Because, you know, if you want any of these legendaries or any of these rare items, you'll eventually get them in the game. But for the legendaries, watch the channel, subscribe, and I'll be releasing all of them shortly. Point is, yeah, this is Kurt, Berserker. If you are a mage, he's probably one of the best companions for you because he'll aggro a lot of people and he'll allow, and he'll allow you to actually shoot them from behind and just do, like, magical stuff as he pulls in all the aggro. Best companion in the game is going to be Siora. She is a native. She is romanceable. Kurt is romanceable too, but only if you're the, uh, the lady Desade, not the Lord Desade. Uh, Siora is bisexual. She'll go for either the lady or the uh, Lord himself. I romanced her. Number one, she's awesome. Number two, her power is extremely useful. She has healing abilities and she could also do damage abilities. And she's a native, which makes it easier for you to walk around throughout the natives and interact with them because they'll see you walking around with her and they'll be like, oh, she must trust them and et cetera, et cetera. And that's more or less how that works. Next up, Vasco, super cool, tatted face. He's a knot. They're more like sailors in the world. And he's more this almost hybrid. He's like a, he's a rogue, but he also has like a little bit of a damage dealer 
rogue, if you will, but he literally focuses on applying poison to his blade. He'll literally tell you every single time, applying poison to my blade, let's go. Like, legit, that's his only line, and the community knows him for it. But he's pretty cool, has a cool background. His mission is actually one of the better ones as well because you kind of find out his background as well. And you get into the knots, and I think that their whole entire, like, culture and faction is really interesting. But, yeah, they mainly focus in on the nautical side of it, the sailor side of it. Next up, we have... Who's the next one? Technically, you get uh, Asfro. Oh, I'm sorry, Afra first. She is pretty cool. She is part of the Bridge Alliance. She, they're, they're kind of weird because their leader is kind of like he's the dumbest leader that you'll ever find, but he does his job well. But he, they're like more focused in on science. And she's a rogue, but she doesn't use melee weapons. She legit only uses guns. So she's a marksman. And again, pretty cool. She's another romanceable option, but she could only be romanced by Lord Desade, not by uh, Lady Desade. Oh, I forgot. Vasco's bisexual, too. So, Vasco's bisexual. He'll go for either the dude or the girl, uh, Desade. Um, and finally, Petrus. Petrus is the religious one. He is, he's not a zealot. He knew you when you were, well, um, by the time you were a little kid, he was part of the court. And eventually, he is politically inclined and religiously inclined and it makes him super interesting because he loves the politics just as much as he likes religion he probably never tell you that but he's also a mage too so if you're the bruiser type yeah go ahead and grab you probably see aura and then grab petrus if you're the berserker type the tank type go ahead and aggro and each one of them has their own things i like to walk around with either siora and afra or afra and uh, um vasco and then sometimes since i was a mage kurt was my go-to for the start but now at end game and i respect all my classes i was going around with this hybrid kind of build where i was able to use all three weapons so i just picked whoever was my favorite but in all actuality sierra is a must always have sierra in your party and then as you do the companion quest which each one of them has three of them go ahead and decide which one you want for the end game but sierra Four romanceable classes. The only one you cannot romance is Petrus because he's the man of the cloth. Exploration. Exploration comes in a bunch of different flavors. This is the map, the island of Tier 4D. I'm not going to be hovering over any of those places because they are... There's missions there and I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. So this is the prologue. This is Serene. This is where you come from. You can never go back as soon as you get on that ship after the end of the prologue. This right here will take you over to the island of Tier 4D. And Tier 4D has all of these locations. There's a couple more because this is a previously saved file. Again, not trying to spoil you guys. But there's even more locations to be, if I'm not mistaken, another maybe three or four um, at this point in the game. But exploration is going to take place on the map. Each and every single one of these locations has an even... Like, they're, they're pretty big hub locations, right? Question marks are always going to be points of interest. You eventually find them. You can find... Best part is make sure to grab all of the little camps they will allow you to actually travel fast travel between all of them you could go ahead and just hit over here travel travel between each and every single camp each and every single village and it'll be pretty fast like th this type of fast traveling inside the hub areas is pretty fast other than that while you're exploring make sure to uh, pick up loot get all of the um plants that you can because the plants they're known as hawthorn and borage let me go ahead and show you guys real quick. Hawthorne and Borage are actually used to make healing potions and magic potions. So if you have one point in crafting, you could always just create more of those. But yes, you can definitely, if you're a rogue, this is how my character more or less looks at like at the end, near the end at least. If you have the uh, Borage or the actual materials to make, um, here it goes, the ingredients... You can make health potions and you can make borge potions. I have an absurd amount right now. If you look, I got 51 and 77 health potions. It's just the way I do things. <laughs> you could also have them and you could swap them. You could bind them. It's cool. Like if you pause it, you could actually bind potions. No, I didn't mean to revive. That was the revival one. But yeah. Point is, there you guys have it. Exploration. If you ever want to... Uh, in your exploration, you'll fight fine. You'll find bosses. You'll find tons of enemies. It does suffer from the uh, how would I like to say this? It suffers from the Dragon Age issue where you can every time you appear in a city at night, there's people in certain spots that will fight you. 
every single time. And then it also suffers from the Dragon Age one as well. Because the Dragon Age one, every single spot where enemies spawn at, this is um, between the fast travels, you'll come into this little area, this little campsite where you get to talk to all your, uh, you know, all your people and everything like that. If you can master where every single enemy is in a particular area, hey, they're going to appear there every single time besides mini bosses. Just the way it is. Mini bosses appear very seldomly. But they like this little group right here, they're going to they're gonna appear every time. Every single time. Stealth. Stealth is actually quite useless. <laughs> it's not useless. It's just not the greatest in this game but i need to explain it to you guys so stuff comes in two flavors number one obviously you're going to want to stealth in the dark that's an obvious you're going to want to wait till nighttime and then be able to stealth afterwards now if it's not nighttime you are going to have a hard time with it but at the same time there are ways to go around it so what you're going to want to do is always carry always i always this is a tip another tip by the way but always carry faction abled or factionized uh garments armors right so this one right here as you can tell if you see where it says unique right next to unique is a symbol that symbol means that it's a native garment or native armor so if i walk around the natives they think i'm a native common sense right next one this is nautical like it looks very similar to what this dude is wearing what a vasco is wearing this that symbol right there that blue with the anchorage or whatever the hell with the yellow that right there is a nautical one so i could wear this so let, let's go ahead and do the test right i'm gonna wear my warrior armor my warrior king armor which is the best armor in the game show you guys how to do it later and i come over here and i try to go in someplace look what it says impossible to enter look for another passage and be discreet or you will be attacked on site lose reputation of the knots now i could do this as well let me just go around here the game it doesn't have that type of st like you know like they're looking at you change garments like you could legit do it in front of them but yeah, now I'm wearing nuts. And now guess what? I can't do it. But check this out. So this guy right here. Watch. I'm going to switch clothing right in front of him. And this is going to cause an issue. And now he wants to fight. And now I lost reputation. Forbidden zone. Because I changed. So that's how stealth more or less works. So I'll let them get a few hits. All right. Makes sense, right? Stuff is more or less explanatory. You're going to want to kneel down. It has to be dark. Or you can just wear the different garments and it'll allow you to actually stealth. But that's how the stealth works. It's not good stealth. Just being honest. It's just not, <laughs> just not good stuff at all. But it'll allow you to go to different areas. The knots usually have things locked down, hacked tight. And... They sometimes have, like, really cool items for you to get. So, like, right there, I just picked up a box, and it had a ruby in it. So, they're useful. Not even going to lie. They are useful. They're pretty useful. So, that is stealth. So, combat is actually pretty good. I like the combat in this game. It is actually pretty fun. For a mage, it looks a little different because you're going to be long range. You have the ability to parry, stasis. There's a lot of tricks that come along with being a mage right now at the same time i'm gonna i'm gonna take you guys towards a boss because i want you guys to see more or less what a boss looks like and because you're normally going to be fighting a lot of different uh a lot of different this is a previous save file by the way i've already beaten the game but you're going to be fighting a lot of different beings instead of uh, just one boss but the one boss fights are tricky and it allows me to have enough time to to show you guys different aspects of the combat itself let me go over here because this is where the boss is damn i'm just trying to go oh i gotta go around but the, you're gonna be fighting these guardians a lot a lot a lot a lot there's at least maybe i would like to say 20 of them throughout the whole game but yep here he is looks pretty cool looks pretty tough there's like three different types. They more or less have the same attack pattern. So let's, I just stasis him. I'm going to be stasising him a lot. In fact, I'm going to use my alt on him. So my alt, stasis, and then 
Yeah, it's just not going to hold him long because he's a strong enemy. So, if you look at his long health bar, that's obviously, you can tell it pops up in the, at the top. He is a boss or a guardian. So, each guardian has a lot of those shields. Now, those shields, you have them as well. Those are your armor. You have to break his armor or use something that is able to break armors. So, stasis at its highest level, which if I hit select right now... Oh, I hate it because it's done in-game. <laughs> this is a nice little detail, but... I hate it. So stasis actually shreds armor at this point in the game. But so does heavy blunt weapons. They are able to shred armor. You're, you got to dodge at the right time. Again, the game's not too, not too hard. So as you can see, I have a dodge. I have an actual dodge that I'm able to use apart. So usually you just have this little dodge. But if you double tap it, you have the double roll, which is a skill that you can eventually unlock. And then if you use the rings, which is why I like mages, you get the lightning dash. So now, each and every single has a furia ability like that, right? You'll get a fury attack, which is cool. But for the... For the actual magic one, your fury is just a bigger ball. And then you drink another potion. Time that properly. Hit him with one of those. Hit him again with stasis. And there you guys have it. So you got a memory crystal, sacrificial sword. I actually just showed you guys how to get the sacrificial sword by doing that. Point is, your skills to finish off with combat and to give you and almost finish off this video, your skills are going to be contingent upon how much you invest in every particular skill. So for example, Divine Magic Ring has four levels to it. So you have the original base level and then you have one, two, three, four. Then you get another one. And then this one, even though lightning, it doesn't help you do lightning dash. It does help you do it faster, allows faster attacks after lightning dash. But it also does shadow impact, costs less mana, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Magic energy, which is basically mana. Uh, it does. Where is this one? Range shadow impact can hit enemies from a greater distance with shadow impact, which is your fury ability, which is your L trigger. And then Whirlwind of Shadows, which allows you to do the Shadow Missile, which is your basic attack. And then you eventually get your ultimate ability, which is at the top. Honestly, Fury is broken. Pun intended, because I am. <laughs> but Fury is broken. Fury has an enormous amount of damage that you're able to do. It just it adds so much damage potential to anybody who maximizes agility and uh, strength. So definitely, Fury, if you just do... One-handed blades, get long blades, and then get one of the legendary long blades. It's like the great, either the, the, uh, what is it called? What is it called? What is, what is it called? The forgotten blade of the Assads or the forgotten blade of the deceased king or one of those, one of those forgotten blades. Let me see if I'm carrying it around so I can show you guys. But you get, no, I have the ring of power and then I got sacrificial sword is the one that we just got. You have to defeat that enemy. I'll do a video on it, but Yeah. Ring of Divine Fury is the only ring, the only legendary ring you could possibly get throughout the whole entire game. But for Hammer of the Forgotten God is one of the legendary blunt weapons, if not the only legendary blunt weapon that you could get. Point is, that has been combat. Your skills will determine on how much fun you have. I like being a hybrid, so I therefore I'm able to use like two-handed heavy weapons. I'm able to use my magic abilities and then swap, do use the roll because I invested on the roll, which is a hybrid class ability between warrior and rogue so yeah shadow blast is that little blast wave and then my ult is let me see can i get my ult again yeah oh uh, it would be this and it does like a stasis effect area it's a stasis area effect which is cool but yeah that's more or less the gist of combat and finally for the final point to talk about ending and the choice and consequence now currently in the game there are five different factions there's five different Check this out. Five different companions, five different factions. Well, technically six different factions, but in reality, there's a total of uh, five different factions that you have to, you know, can take into consideration. But at the end of the day, as you see me right here, and I'm glowing right now, I'm glowing. <laughs> at the end of the day, 
every your endings are going to be contingent upon whether they're friendly, whether they're suspicious, whether whatever it is, if they're the enemy, however you want to slice it, they are your endings are going to be contingent upon that. So if you do good, usually if you do good by your companions, they will help you along the lines of doing good for their clan more or less that doesn't mean you can't love how absolutely love a companion and do right by your companion and do wrong by their uh, side now if you feel strongly about not liking a particular side which i did i thought the bridge alliance there were complete idiots throughout the whole entire game i'm like you guys are buffoons and you're getting in my way and i'm gonna start like deleting you people right this is uh, choice and consequence at its finest because you can literally have any combination, every variation of having the natives hate you, having the knots hate you, having the coin guard hate you. Coin guard is the only one you don't need to have at friendly to have the perfect ending. There's a perfect ending that you could possibly get. Coin guard is the only one you don't need it because they are, there's a part that they have in the game where you would eventually understand why they will fluctuate. But coin guard is the only one. Other than that, Telema is the religious country. Bridge Alliance are the scientific country. Knots are the water country or the rogues. And then natives are the natives and they're the mages or the powerful people. But they're super interesting. Each and every single one of these are interesting. You'll have different political things going on. And that's really where the fun of the game is at. Because it's the game. Game and the gameplay and the action adventure aspect of it. But then the, the political and the uh, like backstabbing, money laundering, like, like the theft and everything going on up, along with these companion quests. That's what makes Greedfall an amazing title. But definitely, you guys, that has been the beginner's guide. I went through every aspect that you need to more or less understand. Choice and consequence is going to be contingent upon your decision between every single uh, individual, every single uh, clan and their king, the cardinals, the king of Kikmet, so on and so forth. They are going to be the individuals. And if you say wrong things, you'll get bad consequences. If you do the right things, you'll get good consequences. You could easily pour in, I poured in 50 hours to get the great ending. You could easily pour in another 50 to get the truly bad ending. You could do absolutely whatever you want. Definitely be evil. It doesn't allow you to go, you know, do an all kill like run where you just kill everybody, but it does allow you to be pretty darn bad. But that is it for the video, you guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, enjoyed the time we spent. Uh, it is a great game definitely it does have its faults we're going to get into all of that but if you want to know tips and tricks if you want to know the essentials if you want to know more in depth about the skills there's more videos coming out so subscribe to the channel i'm going to be doing these for a couple more games too wasteland is coming up i'm going to be doing this for wasteland as well that is a big rpg that i absolutely love and hold, hold in high regard but anyways you guys if you want to support the channel in any way shape or form you can use the links down in the description below amazon link if you want to buy greedfall go ahead and check out i'm gonna leave a link down in the description below for you. it's available on all platforms definitely go ahead and check that out you could also use it for uh use my creator code costs you absolutely nothing and gives me a little bit of kickback for sure thank you very much if you guys are would so kindly do that you could also follow me on tiktok twitter instagram links are down in the description below along with my patreon do consider supporting me there with all the day keeps the landlord away i'm your host mike fury it's been a complete pleasure until next time mike off